same as Black Rock Mountain, but we know that some of the loyal few here want to continue to see some of the awesome games that we have coming up on stream, which is Gar versus RDU. Uh, this one is a rivalry set between two players who've competed a lot in DreamHack's past, and we'll see how they're able to bring it today. Um, both of them are super competitive players. And was like They care so much about winning and you know, consequently losing that uh, I'm, I'm expecting that this one has a lot of emotion behind it, even if they can't necessarily communicate that to, uh, to the stream. Oh, yeah, obviously. And also a very interesting thing is that Gara is a guy who innovates. Again, like he is building his own decks. He is bringing his own brews. Where RDU is the guy who mostly doesn't deck build that much, but uh, he takes the decks from the, from the net and then he is changing them. So he is streamlining his decks. He's thinking a lot about the, the setups he's bringing. And he was one of the best players uh, coming into the ban format before where he was getting all the things, like counters, what counters what, he was putting an, an insane volume of games into that. So I'm really excited to see how is he going to cope with the Conquest format that um, I think favors the deck builders and creativity more. Uh, so players like Gara should have, uh, will have a bigger edge uh, coming into the match. Absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> he's just such a weird deck builder. Like, and I feel, I feel like no one really agrees with him much. Um, when you think about players which other people copy their decks from, uh, they actually don't think of Gar as much. They think more of like, you know, guys like Strife Crow and Kalento. But like Gar actually innovates a lot. It's a pretty, pretty big one. So I think oh, yeah, uh, but, uh, it's going to be really cool to see what he has offered. Uh, he's got Shaman, Hunter, and Warrior. That's pretty different classes. It's three different classes from RDU. So, I, you know, six classes, you know, it's going to be a really fun time, I think. That's the beauty of Conquest. But I think our players are ready, so we can jump into the first game right about now. Yeah. All right, so uh, here we go. Game number one, Shaman versus Paladin. Uh, you know, pretty normal Paladin list. Uh, pretty normal Shaman list, it looks like. You got Alec here, so nothing too out of the ordinary. And I guess we're going to see Paladin potentially just steamroll Shaman, right? Because Paladin's got so much uh, board tempo early on. Really hard for Shaman to fight back without Lightning Storm. But even then, you clog up your mana for the next couple turns. You're going to need a Lava Shock from Black Rock Mountain to help you out here. <laughs> yeah, you certainly will. But uh, then again, Gara is not a guy that uh, is, a is losing easily. And he knows Shaman. He is known as Gara Best Shaman. Uh, actually, not from Harston. He was playing World of Warcraft before, but he is a great player. And even though RDU is, uh, well, RDU's start is a bit weird. He is that um, Aldor Peacekeeper, but is he going for a full aggro there with Aldor, or is he going to do it up on free? Um, because mm. versus Shaman, I think Shaman can exhaust your resources. Shaman can respond to whatever you're doing, and then you're out of cards suddenly. And Shaman is starting to play Azur Drakes and cards that bring them cards. So yeah. I wouldn't count Gar out yet, especially <clears throat> after the Earth Shock. No, here. absolutely not. I mean, Shaman still can fight. Like Shaman's one of those decks in the past that was seen as like a more inconsistent druid. It it could beat anything as long as it felt fell on the curve. And you know, it was a really good mix of uh, aggression and defensiveness. You had Pharaoh Spirits to be really defensive with Defender of Argus plays and Lightning Storms, and then you had uh, Doom Hammers, which could help you burst and now it's since seen a lot of innovation with um you know the uh the power mace with like a little bit of mechs here and there and then you have neptalon to refill your hand so i want to i want to see like if agar has found a way to really make shaman more viable because i know he's it's a class that he's loved a lot uh people joke that's like gara best shaman so it's like of course you should play it well but you know he's even though he, that's his name he really loves playing Priest and Hunter. Those, those are his two favorite classes. So yeah. uh, if you bring Shaman, it's like one of those things where he really thinks it's a good class. There is also one more background story for RDU because RDU recently joined Team Nihilum with Life Coach, uh, Thais, and mm -hmm. Lothar. So I, I'm really curious to see how much is he going to improve with those guys on his team. Uh, his previous team, MYM, was also very good and uh, had a, a lot of great guys. But right now, Thais and life coach are really on top of Harson pro scene and uh, they bring a lot of value so if those guys started testing together and um are you can really step on another level I wonder. 
Mm, well, looks like uh, the mana tide totem is not gonna really do too much. Just cycles through. You just hope that your opponent has to play a little bit off curve on the <clears throat> on the uh, the mana cycle. So it's like he's just gonna try and control the state of the board, but this shouldn't really stop him from developing the Azure Drake, should it? Well, I guess now that you have something to fill out the curve with Zombie Chow and other stuff like that, you'd rather just draw it out there. Yeah, it's fine. Also, like, set up Power Mage so that you can buff by a Shredder next turn. If you choose to, because Fire Elemental on 6 might be also very uh, powerful. And uh, your board is not something that uh, Paladin is going to True Silver. And True Silver being there is stopping Master for Battle. So Gara is like not giving any good targets for True Silver to kill. All right. Well, uh, it seems like we're going to be in for a pretty long game in Grindy. Um, just because I feel like uh, Paladin's going to ultimately have a final say of like a board clear, but Shaman's going to keep trying to build it up. And he's got like Azure Drake and stuff to refill his hand. Fire Elemental, pretty reasonable. Uh, even if this one goes down, he can make Fire Elemental number two with. Three damage from the power maze and build a six five, and it spawns something else. It also so, is uh, a card that can deal with true silver because you need something else, like a consecration, to deal with fire elemental and a weapon attack. So you're basically taking four damage. Well, or just one. Gara has mm. double rock fighter. If he has a doom hammer, that might be the burst he needs. Yeah. Double rock biter, it's it's something. It's not like the Doom Hammer that you're worried about. And I, I think it's really more about the board centric approach of how you use like this this uh this power mace and build up like another six five minion with the pilot shredder. Other than that, it's like it, it has good synergies with um Harvest Golem and the Anoyatron. Artie looks really stressed, by the way. Is he okay? Gara or are you? Are you? <laughs> yeah, he yeah, is really stressed. <clears throat> I guess he didn't practice versus Shaman that much. Or maybe he's just, uh, you know, he has homework to do. <laughs> so he needs to finish Yeah, or, you know, some bully at school, like, gave him a noogie. Definitely the best response here. Uh, powering up that 6-5. Worth evaluating. Um, I guess you want to kill off the mini bot as well. Or you could just kill off the... The silver hand recruit to try to prevent a big turn eight swing with quartermaster with muster for battle. I like another strong recruits. possibility. Yep. And he I, actually he can clear with uh, if he if he uses rock buyer on the yeah on the totem. But then there is no reason to clear really. Mm. Even if uh, paladin attacks, if already attacks into that. Uh, yeah, that's actually the question. Like, what do you attack with true silver? Uh, well, I, I guess you would just uh, attack the pilot. You're not in a rush to... Like, I, Shaman's still losing a lot of their burst potential by not having Doomhammer in the deck. So I think um, you're okay with like using the truce over here. So if you Consecrate, and then just clean up the rest. Is there any merit in attacking the Taunt Totem with a 2-2, then going um, with a True Silver into the 6-5, and then using Consecrate? Yeah, but then you don't kill off go. like the one one that remains from the file elemental. Does this does the health really matter to you? Six damage. I I think it might. Like also, you can also iron beak that with the um, bite of the shredder. <laughs> that's that's a lot to try and uh, deny it. I th although it's a really good question. Is there many things that you want to iron beak owl in this matchup? Um, sludge belcher maybe. Yeah, I'm not uh, entirely uh, sure. Not, not really. Yeah, well, that was they, a powerful clear anyway. If they have, like, you know, in a really powerful mech that's been uh, buffed up by the Power Mace, like the Pilot Shredder, I think that's actually one of the prime targets you'd want to silence. It's a really valid point, Nimsh. Oh, you're basically killing two birds with one stone. With the Iron Beak Owl. Whoa! Bird, stone. You didn't even realize how deep that the pun that was until you actually yeah. said it. Well played. Nice. Alright, so here for RDU, uh, he's actually getting back to the game really fast with Lotha being super powerful versus Shaman having all those spells. 
And uh, Gar will have to get something big. I'm still waiting for the Doomhammer. There is a Harvest Golem that's not bad. But then playing a Slash Belcher is just playing into that Lothab. Mm, yeah, I'm not exactly sure. Uh... <clears throat> like this, this turn's pretty awkward. I guess you could. I guess you could try and see if you can set up that Power Mace would have a really powerful synergy with the um, Harvest Golem. But Lothab on the board plus that True Silver will just basically kill off anything that you play. Well, the good thing about Lothab is that it is stopping the True Silver. If True Silver attacks into one, two, you're Oops, probably happy sorry. about that. But then. Is there any merit in like maybe using hero power, uh, Harvest Golem, Defender Vargas, and a hero power? Mm. So you, you've seen one consecration already, and it, it is developing board for you with four minions. Because Sludge Belcher doesn't really do anything here. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Sludge Belcher just gets completely destroyed. Although, it does soften it up so that way you could hit it with the weapon next turn. And then, uh, if you build up the board so that way you can protect his Harvest Golem, it can be a reasonable force at 4-5 or five or maybe even more if you want to taunt up um, it directly as well. Yeah, it is something. And, uh, and Power Mace is a powerful card. There is the Sylvanas Hex Bait. All right, Rainforest for, for RDU. Well, this is basically what how you do play this matchup. It's, it's all about like... Just grinding it out. Yeah, War of Attrition kind of. Whoever runs out of answers or minions first. Well, Shaman will have a really good advantage if it can deal well with uh, both Tyrion and Sylvanas and Dr. Boom. Like, that's pretty much the evaluation of it. I really like the Hex here. Just don't jeopardize the board. Uh, he already used two true silver charges. In fact, that Harvest Golem might just bully like the entire board after that point. Worth evaluating Unless... if you want to get the damage to him first. So, yeah, that's a good choice. And then hex after that. Yep. Yep. You definitely want to hex Sylvanas for sure, just because this is your last mech. And uh, you're you're essentially like make, saying like this board is what I need to win. Doctor Boom Whoa. draw was pretty big though. Whoa. Yeah, that's uh, as as you said. Like if Gar is able to deal with Sylvanas, uh, Doctor Boom, and Tyrion, he'll be in a good position. But right now, this Doctor Boom it, it is threatening the board. Uh, but how much damage is there uh, with from from Gara with double Rogue Biter and Crackle? It's a three five from Power Mace. And then there's five again, that's ten, that's six, sixteen. And Crackle, if Crackle hits for four, that's it. Oh my oh, god. That's seven damage. That's but lethal. He, that was lethal anyway, because he only needed four. And uh with with the totem, that was a guaranteed four. Oh, you're Harvest, right. Buffing the, the harvest goal. Spell harvest. power, yeah. Yeah, that was definitely oh, that enough. Was sick. Yeah, you forgot about the spell power there. And so Gara takes game number one and oof, already got crushed. That, I mean, that crackle really didn't matter as much, but, um, you know, it's always like the, the funnier play when it's like, oh, it rolled for the highest amount. Yeah, like seven yeah. damage for two mana. Yeah, you got In dunked. your face. Fireball, where are you now? Yeah. Well, uh, the, you know, taking a look at the, the field here, the Shaman won the first game against a matchup that I considered pretty tough. So Gar comes in with an advantage, and now RDU has to win with, uh, you know, he has to win against Hunter and Warrior. And, you know, there are some pretty decent matchups here. If he lines up Paladin to Warrior, Priest into Hunter, I still think he can he can do this. <clears throat> Excuse me, do this. But just need to make sure that uh, he doesn't ever get stuck where it's like one deck can be targeted over and over and over. Um, yeah. And I'm looking at the Rogue versus Warrior as the, the hardest matchup for RD to win. And also um, Hunter versus Paladin is a good matchup for Hunter. So both players, they do have good matchups. Now it's all about how do they match and uh, the mind games. Like, what do you think your opponent is going to play? That's why uh, when I was talking to Striker at some point, he said that there is no reason to really mind game your opponents and you can randomize your picks. Uh, oh, he said that about Conquest? 
Yeah, you said that about conquest. Like so you, you say, do... conquest takes less strategy <laughs> and skill. Is that what he's saying? Mm. The strategy is to randomize the stuff. <clears throat> the think, skill is to play there the is a little strategy yeah. there. Yeah. Um, it depends. There's like different tiers of strategies where like you can play decent decks across the field. There's the other ones where you can pick based off the meta game, and there's ones that you can be like targeting specifically one type of deck that you think is going to be around. So if you bring three yeah. decks that beat Face Hunter, then uh, you have something that's like all trying to capitalize on killing that one aggressive deck. The challenge yeah, is that if, you, if they don't bring it, well, you might just lose. So exactly, it is a risky strategy, but it can work. Uh, but I think our play players are ready, so we can jump into game number two. All right. Well, here we go. Priest versus Hunter. This is definitely one of the better matchups for uh, for Priest. The priest. Um, if you have the early zombie chow and you have death lords, unless they have Hunter's Mark, it's almost impossible for Hunter to win from that point on. Um, priest runs away with the game too easily. And especially if they have Northshire Cleric drawing cards behind it. They, they almost guaranteed won't lose. Like, it doesn't matter if they don't have Alcanized Soul Priest and Holy Fire and different ways to clear the board and heal up. And it looks like it is, the Chinese version of the deck. He's got Giblin Stalker. This is going to be so hard for Gar to win. Wait, he's got he... Flare? Whoa. That's that's actually useful against the Giblin Stalker, in a sense. <laughs> yeah, he can actually use what? it here. Can you, tell, can you tell us more about the Chinese Priest deck, though? Yeah, so it benefits off of uh, delaying your opponent as best as you can. Um, normally, cards like Death Lord are so scary because of the tempo that you give to your opponent if they drop anything like 5 attack and higher, or 4 attack and higher. But um, now that you have Light Bombs in the deck, it's like by the time they kill Death Lord, it usually takes a couple of turns. Uh, it's like turn 5, and then turn 6, you can Light Bomb, so whatever comes out. Or, you know, if it's a single target and you have Shadow or Death, you can kill it too. Um, Light Bomb's also surprisingly one of the very e few effective cards that can win tempo back from uh, Dr. Boom because it costs less mana. So if your opponent, if you say you're on turn seven, you, you play whatever, they play Dr. Boom and you're on turn eight, you can Light Bomb and still like save a minion or you can use the two remaining, min two, two remaining mana to develop something else like the Giblin Stalker. So it's a pretty well-balanced deck. Uh, it's good against control, good against aggro. The one thing that it really sucks against is combo. So like Oil Rogue, <laughs> this, this yeah. deck I feel like it's dunked on, but I know a few players are like saying it's okay against uh, Oil Rogue. By the way, that was a very difficult turn two for Gara. Uh, he had a couple of options there, uh, just playing minions, uh, trading into the zombie chow was also an option, but um, the best decision possibly to just steal five damage to face. Right now he's going to lose this. Um, this abuse the surgeon easily, but he has that. Uh, yeah, that, that's that's the problem now. Like, do you start trading suddenly, or do you just continue with the face uh, face raise? One of the ways to win versus priest overall as a face hunter is just to try to outrun their answers, to, to kill them before they draw into something specific and before they are able to stabilize. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, you, you don't actually have to. If it's just a mad scientist, I think you can definitely attack face there. You're still not in a, a super duper rush. Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. But you do want to pick some cards now. Like, you do want to get Holy Nova, I guess, as a priest. Holy Nova would be excellent. Oh, uh, Cabal Shadow Priest is nice. He's for decent. Turn five. Yeah. I'm gonna play There's, Dark oh. Cult Master, Dark Cultist. So. Mm. There's almost always something you can steal in this matchup with Cabal Shadow Priest. And not only that, yeah. not only you kill something, you gain something, you also uh, play the 4 5. A very powerful card. And he's going for it instead of just coining out the, the Stalker. Yeah, uh, I think it's better to keep your options. I was surprised that he didn't want to put the Giblin Stalker so he can, like, guarantee get it. Because if his opponent has a bow, then this Knife Jugger will live. And he doesn't have a plot follow-up play on the next turn. Kill Guard. Command to the Guard. face. That is something fierce. Oh, my. That's the way to go. 
Now we hope there is no Sludge Belcher, but there will be Sludge Belcher. Sludge Belcher will be played last turn. So are you already at 12? Right, but now he's got to unleash the Hounds. So... An explosive uh, trap as well. The more minions you build, the more damage you build against yourself. And there is an Arcing Golem. How much damage is there? Uh, it's seven with this. Yeah. You might need a flare eventually to try to flare. draw. I think you can flare, actually. You do flare, you see what you get, and then you possibly unleash, go for face with everything in hero power, put them on seven. And then the next turn you will have three cards. You have Arcing Golem, you have card from Flare, and you have card your top deck. And you can deal six from Arcing Golem. You do have Explosive Trap as well. And you and he will have to attack into the dogs. Oh, he doesn't have a mana to flare and hero power though. That, yeah, that, that's definitely inconvenient. Whoa, Kazan Mystic! Oh, that's Dude, huge. That's, that's so big. So huge. Because that wow. deals with the Arcing Golem. Oh my god. But there is a flare. Oh, because Flare is for two. Oh my god. I, I haven't seen Flare since Nerf. Seriously. It's really funny, man. Now he's gonna put on the race. And in a way, it's like Gara has to... Oh, but he's got... Yeah, so like... Is that just game right there? Wait, that's yeah. eight? Six? Uh, one mana yeah. all... Wait. No, no, no. You Flare and then Arcane Golem. <laughs> Six, nine. Yeah, that's game. <laughs> Our dude doesn't even know how to respond. He's like, what are you doing playing Flare? <laughs> Why are you playing Flare? <laughs> uh, Impossible. Oh, that's so funny, man. Whoa. All right, well, that's game two. That's, that's, that's actually hilarious, man. I guess that's why you play Flare, because it always works if they steal your secrets. Well, I think I've... he was also anticipating Face Hunter being played, so... He would win the mirror a lot higher chance that way. Yeah, yeah. That's, well, we do that's highly them. amusing to me. But people do play Kazan as well because everybody plays Hunter almost. Like Hunter is, is one of the most popular decks in Conquest. People play Faze, they play um, um, Midrange as well. So if you play Flare, uh, it's like we, we've seen Kazan Mystic with, um, in Shaman. We've seen Kazan Mystic in Mage. Oh, you also play against Mages. The Mages, they do run um, Secrets, like Mirror Entities and others. So I think Flair actually has uh, a place in current meta game, and we can see from Gara using it perfectly to to steal the game from RDU. Right now, Gara just needs to win with his Warrior deck, and RDU is yet to win a game. Yeah, uh, he's he's gonna have to do it with Rogue, uh, and that's gonna be tough because it's gonna have to hit the the Warrior eventually. Um, not exactly sure. If he can do that, though, that's going to be really intense. Mm. Being RDU, I think you do Q Paladin right now because Paladin has the best matchup, whatever warrior version this is, and you want to learn everything about this warrior before you approach it with both Priest uh, or Rogue. Priest is okay versus Warrior, but then Priest has to take Warrior to Fatigue, and you would like to know exactly what's in the Warrior's deck, I believe, before you go with Priest. All right, so uh, yeah, looks like uh, we're gonna just see whatever it is. I, I guess Paladin is the best choice. Priest versus Warrior is also suspect, just based off of um, just based off of how like his thoughts deals and stuff with land. My control tech. Wow, Gar has got like everything prepared for his counters <laughs> today. Like MCT to against Paladin is just like, dude. How do you know? Like, it just feels like he's reaching into the sideboard and pulling out the right cards, right? Yeah. Wow, wait. Uh, so, Mind Control Tech in Warrior, would you ever expect that? Uh, I mean, back when everyone was experimenting with it, maybe, but not generally speaking. Uh, Gar, of course, taking his time because uh, Fiery War Axe is not to be coined out against Zombie Chow. You can definitely take your time. And he gets to bait out the Knife Jugger, which is a free card to pick up there. Ooh. He has a must have for battle. Very nice. You can play what? MC, MC deck and steal a dude. Dude, such a big play. Yeah, but or you can just develop the Acolyte Pain and, and just try <laughs> to get some cards here. Uh, possibly kill Zombie Chow to just get even more value there. 
and get the, get the help back. Yeah, the problem with my, Mind Control Tech versus Paladin is that it is amazing uh, because Paladin is going to have four minions at some point of the game. Oh! Oh, he actually goes for it. Well, that's not bad. It is a free free minion, and you do steal one one, and you kill the one uh, one of the one ones. Yeah, I, I guess he didn't want his acolyte to be taken by True Silver. So, if you know that was like the less greedy play. But think uh, about it. Like yeah. for free mana, you got a four four on your side, and you kill you like dealt with one one on the other side. So that's a pretty good trade for a free mana still. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm trying to like imagine it. So it's a four four deal one damage minion effectively. All right. Reasonable. Kel'Thuzad in the <laughs> warrior deck. That's Gara. Is there nothing Gara won't play to destroy yeah. Paladin? I don't get it. Gara, like he's... Gara played. I don't know if you remember it, but in China, uh, WCA, Gara played Deathwing in a Paladin deck because apparently it comboed with Tyrion Fordring. Because you do play Tyrion and then you attack with Tyrion and then you play Deathwing, you kill your own Tyrion and you have Ashbringer and you like finish the game. Huh. So. That's out. really funny. Oh, there's oh. a quarter master top deck. That's pretty much what he wanted. Oh yeah. Sludge Belcher was okay too, though. Let's be fair. Like Sludge Belcher, like as much as like, oh, are you top deck? It's yeah. The Sludge Belcher was also a pretty good play. Yeah, very decent. But then just getting um, plus four, plus four on board, and then and then two five for five mana. Well, both players are getting those uh, interesting plays. Hmm, Duskmaster. Yeah, so, you know, he was waiting for the Acolyte to have development with, the, like, things like the Taskmaster, but it's it's not going to be, it's not going to be working out here if uh, he's going to be dead soon. Yeah, like, normally you could, you could play Savannah in this position, but uh, he's too low on health. Like, 14 is just with a possible true so uh, he's staring at eight points of damage right now even though paladin doesn't have burst if there's a true silver champion that would be a lot of a lot of damage so he has to somehow deal with it uh one of the best ways to deal with this board is using fairy works but then again he's taking damage hmm. what about um attacking into the two five with the uh, pilot shredder then killing two five with taskmaster Playing that fireworks, killing one of the free freeze, coin armor up. Coin armor up. <laughs> I, don't think you need I, don't, I don't think you need a coin armor up. But I, I like to play up until the, <laughs> the coin armor up. <laughs> I, I think everything up until then was uh, 10 out of 10 damage. Well, you have to think about it. it. It does, but 8 or 7 damage is still very awkward um, on 6 mana. Huh. Well, Shadow boxer. that's pretty convenient for RDU to just snipe that immediately. What's funny about face. Shadow Box? Yeah, no, that's true. Going for face. But you still don't have a clear way that you're going to win. Yeah, and also you have to consider the Shield Maiden on six, giving armor. Shield Maiden, Shield Slam. That would be amazing for Gara. If he picks a Shield Maiden now and he has that coin. Oh, oh, he actually gets oh, it. Whoa. Snap. Gara. He's just got to figure out what's uh, what's the best play here. Because Gara, alternatively, what's... like, you know, if he, he's saving a coin so we can get out, like, Kael'Thuzad. But that's, like, the best scenario that he could have asked for. What is happening, uh, Fred? What is happening with Temple Storm players today? Uh, are you guys changing diet or something? Uh... You know what? Maybe they realize that uh, they, they've been doing it wrong. That they've been, you know, like not drawing wild growth on turn two. That's not how you play Druid. Oh, yeah. I think they've been, think they've been working on it for a while. So improving their play across the board. Proud of them. Oh, the, the shot. Oh, okay. <laughs> Man, that was like an opportunity where it could have been disastrous if it just went straight into the uh, antique heal bot. Would have been so amusing, you know, because yeah, you forget about the small heals that things do. Like True Silver Champion, for example, Shadow Box shoots every time it attacks. And I've had yeah, instances that's... where like it shoots me or shoots a minion, and uh, it kills it because I wasn't thinking about it. Oh yeah, and this is not the normal position you end up in, you end up with. Basically, discard is 
not often being played in Warrior on Paladin wow. because there's an exclusive priest card. And now Kale the Zod will be able to revive Sylvanas no matter what. And what is he going to take back? It almost doesn't matter. Oh, that's, that <laughs> yeah. dude is changing so many hands. It's probably because it's a silver hand recruit. Yep. Oh, man. Already using big trouble. He actually can't deal with this. Yeah, he used Equality Consecration, but he's only going to draw Lothab. He needs to Sludge Belcher and Acolyte. Oh, he just concedes. And that's it. Gar 3 0s RDU. We've had a lot of wow. really quick games, but more importantly, we've had uh, some pretty odd decks on this last, well, not even last day. Back Black Rock Mountains out, Nimsh. Uh, this cast is live. So, uh, you know, these guys, they're they're like trying to give their all here with the last remaining cards here. But I'm, I'm really looking forward to see what Ardu can do in the upcoming weeks uh, when he finally has a chance to play some Black Rock Mountain. Oh, yeah, certainly. I, I think, by the way, I think like whenever... Um somebody says something about Gara, we can direct them to this match because I think Gara showed excellence with his deck building skills, like having those weird choices. And also like the matches, like all the games were like Gara dropping really low and a situation when it seemed like he's going to lose and then just taking the game back. Like with Shaman, he was reloading double rogue biter who won. With Hunter, it was almost almost done, but then he flares and he wins. And with Warrior again, like already was so close to winning. And Gara was able to turn the game around and win and then steal the last game as well. So a very fantastic match. Oh, RDU played really well as well. Um, but then it was a great experience. Great Hearthstone. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Gara takes it for now. And uh, we're going to, I guess, uh, you know, we normally do for four matches. I guess we try to fill out the time slot. But maybe we have time for one more. We'll figure it out. Uh, as we get ready for a break, so we're gonna take a, we're gonna take a few guys. When we come back, we're gonna tell you about what's gonna happen here at the NVIDIA Hearthstone.